Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, a lawsuit has been filed over that deadly drag racing event in Kerrville. That lawsuit filed on behalf of the family of six-year-old Daniel Isaac Trujillo Jones, who was killed in the crash, and on behalf of Chance Jones and Mary Kate Walls, who were seriously hurt during that event. Their children, who were also hurt, are included in the lawsuit as well. The lawsuit filed against the sponsor of the event, Flying Diesel, and Michael Gonzalez, the driver and the owner of the car that was involved in the crash. Attorneys for the victims say the families are hoping the lawsuit will help them figure out what went wrong and make sure it never happens again. Also new at noon, we're learning just how much money CPS Energy says that they had to pay outside attorneys and consultants this year, all part of that battle to fight the huge natural gas bills it racked up during the February winter storm. According to records obtained by our KSA 12 defenders, CPS Energy has now spent over $7 million. The fees were paid to five different law firms and two consultants. This comes after CPS decided earlier this year to file close to 20 lawsuits against many of its natural gas providers and Electric Reliability Council of Texas. CPS officials released the updated records late Monday night, hours after announcing that Rudy Garza would take over as interim president and CEO of the utility next week. A man hit and killed by a driver on the city's northeast side early this morning. It happened on O'Connor Road near Randolph Boulevard just before 630 in the morning. Police say the driver saw a man in a costume in the middle of O'Connor Road. He was holding some kind of stick or weapon. The driver told police that he tried to avoid the man who police say was attacking the cars, but couldn't get out of the way in time. The man in the costume hit by the driver. Police say he died at the scene. We received multiple calls for a, a male uh, dressed uh, as a, in a Flintstone outfit uh, with uh, what was believed to be a spear attacking vehicles at 6.20 in the morning out here. There's no lights and it's completely dark out here. Police say that the driver pulled over and rendered aid along with another driver who witnessed the crash. The sergeant on the scene says the driver will not be facing any charges. The identity of the man killed has not been released. San Antonio police say a shooting in a west side neighborhood appears to have been intentional. Four people, two men, two women, suffered gunshot wounds last night. And as Katrina Weber tells us, the crime scene stretched about a half a block along West Laurel near Zarzamora. A call about a shooting soon revealed there was trouble times four in the 1900 block of West Laurel. Four people hit by bullets. San Antonio police say someone in a car, possibly a sedan, drove up and pulled the trigger after 9.30 last night. It stops in the middle of the road and starts shooting at our, our victims. Um, some unknown reason um, as to why the shots were fired. Of the four, a 50-year-old woman was the most seriously wounded. She was in critical condition. Police say the others are stable. Investigators turned up a lot of evidence, shell casings and other items which they marked off. They say three victims also were scattered across a 50-yard area. The fourth person went to a hospital on her own. It's unknown at this point if they if they ran once the once the, the shots were fired, um, but they were all on the same side of the street. While there's still a lot that police don't know about this case, they say they do believe that this was not a random shooting, that those people were purposely targeted. We do believe it is isolated. Now their goal is to isolate the shooter from society by finding and arresting that person. Police say an early search of the area for the shooter or the car involved turned up nothing. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Pretty foggy this morning, but look, the sun's trying to come out. Yeah, the sun has popped out now, in spots at least. It's going to be a warm day, but we're all waiting for tomorrow. Tomorrow's the big day. we got a cold front coming through here. Cooler temperatures, gusty winds, rain, thunderstorms, you name it. We'll get it all. Let's first start, though, with the time lapse. And you're right about the fog, Ursula. There it is this morning. Lifted pretty quickly, though, and now we're looking at partly cloudy skies. Temperatures at this hour, 74. South southeasterly winds at 7 miles per hour, and that dew point has jumped up to 65. So it is getting a little, a little more sticky out there. As far as temperatures go, 75 Randolph, 70 Boulevardy, 70 Canyon Lake. We did have some clearing, although clouds are trying to build back in now. So we'll call it a partly cloudy afternoon. And we're watching, of course, that cold front, which right now is across central Texas. San Angelo is sitting at 53. This front's going to be slow to move, but we think it'll be here early afternoon tomorrow. So we still have to wait 
another 24 hours here before the front makes it into San Antonio. Here's some of the headlines. Clouds clear. It'll be warm today. And then that front early afternoon tomorrow. Rain is likely with the front. Then it turns cloudy, breezy and cool on Thursday. Highs only in the 50s. Today, though, we make it up to about 79. 78 at 6 o'clock. Sunset around 646 and down to 77 at 8 o'clock. We'll have much more on that cold front and how much rain we could see coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. It is Election Day here in San Antonio and around the nation. Voters deciding the fate of several Texas constitutional amendments and casting ballots in a special runoff election for a state house seat. Republican John Lujan or Democrat Frank Ramirez vying to be the next state representative for District 118. That's a seat that Democrat Leo Pacheco vacated earlier this year. Also on the ballot, eight constitutional amendments. They cover several topics, including taxes, judicial eligibility, religious freedom, and development. Bear County voters can vote at any polling place in the county. And right now on KSET.com, we can give you a closer look at what's on the ballots, plus where you can go to cast your vote. Today could be decision day for vaccines for kids ages 5 to 11. An advisory group to the CDC will weigh in, and then the director of the CDC could sign off with her final approval this evening. This means that the young children of America could start getting their first shot as soon as tomorrow. The White House says that several million doses are already shipping across the country, but they warn it could still take time to get the medicine where they need it. We are... Um, uh, planning on some vaccinations towards the end of this week, but the program for kids ages 5 through 11 really hitting full strength the week of November 8th. Pharmacies like CVS and Walgreens say they are ready to open up appointments as soon as they get those vaccines. As negotiations continue over President Biden's Build Back Better spending plan, concessions are being made to trim the price tag. Yeah, one of those concessions limiting the expanded child tax credit to just one year. ABC's Elizabeth Schultz explains how that may affect families across the country. Finances were already tight for Jennifer Showalter and her two children in West Virginia when the pandemic hit. I had been, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, kind of struggling to get by. Jennifer's husband had recently unexpectedly passed away. When COVID shut down schools and daycares, she stayed home from her job at a cafe to care for the kids. I felt like a failure. I felt like what am I what to do? I felt hopeless. But she says the monthly child tax credit gave her hope. It was enough to help pay for rent, winter clothes and new books. This child credit's not everything to me, but it sure does help. As part of the expanded child tax credit passed in the American Rescue Plan, the IRS has sent out $15 billion monthly since July to the families of about 60 million qualifying children, $250 per child between the ages of 6 and 17, and $300 per child under age 6. Research shows the first two payments alone helped lift three and a half million kids out of poverty. The money is already a life changer for so many working families. This will help cut child poverty in half this year, according to the experts. President Biden had hoped to make the payments permanent in his Build Back Better spending package. But to appease moderate Democrats and cut the bill's price tag, the expanded child tax credit is now only set to go through 2022. I would tell the people in Washington, think about those families who are impacted. Even $250 increase on someone's rent or someone's utilities, that's big. Melanie Skaskin, a veteran and mother of three in Arizona, says the policy should be permanent, especially as the cost of living is going up. I feel like that this is going to help the economy by putting this child tax credit in the hands of people who qualify for it so that they can have a better quality of life so that they can contribute back to the economy. For those who are trying to take advantage of the expanded child tax credit, the IRS has a tool on its website to check your eligibility and register for missing payments. Elizabeth Schulz, ABC News, Washington. Motivation is key when it comes to fitness and working out with your friends can help. In the next half hour, we're going to introduce you to a group of men who have built a community out of sweat, prayers and a lot of laughs. Overnight in Mexico and even here in parts of San Antonio, 
Tombstones in cemeteries are decorated by families who wanted to honor their loved ones for Dia de los Muertos. The tradition goes well beyond altars that you've seen popping up even at the San Antonio airport. Today's celebrations take place in the cemetery where families clean the grave sites the night before and then today the cemeteries are adorned with marigold flowers and candles. They're sometimes placed, believed to light the way from the afterlife to the world of the living. Traditionally, families also bring offerings of food and drink to honor their loved ones. Some families have been carrying on this tradition for years, while for others, this is new and a chance to heal. He's fond of Coco and I just wanted to get him you know, to do something in memory of my husband, you know, his father. Started him off young, so over the years, you know, he's going to be like, okay, mom started this, I'm going to continue the tradition. Today, Stephanie honoring the life of her husband, Gabriel Sines, who passed away in May. Her son Samuel placed an ofrenda and pictures of his dad on the altar at the entrance of Mission Park on the city's southeast side. Outside with live cams, you just how well I listen because it's humid today, so that means it's going to rain tomorrow. Am I right? Well, that's part of it. Yeah. See? See? I listen. Yeah. Appreciate that. What's Dan? the other part? <laughs> well, we got a big cold front headed our way, which I know you guys are okay. excited about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to cool us down quite a bit tomorrow afternoon. The aquifer, by the way, down seven tenths of a foot to 666.1. We are expecting some more rain, so this will hopefully help the aquifer a little bit. And then we'll have to watch what happens with the pollen count. Molds and ragweed are both low, but we know what fronts can do, uh, especially if we get some rain. It'll kick up the mold. We may kick up some other allergens, so we'll let you know what happens there. Your forecast is straight ahead. You guys are always cold, so how can you be excited about a cold front coming? Well, I get to wear my turtleneck sweater. Okay. So please wear that tomorrow. Yes. Okay. Well, we we'll complain adjust. when it's cold inside the newsroom. They're <laughs> always cold. In here. Yeah. Well, we always agree, Justin is, and I. Cold. You're always the one that's yeah. like. I'm over here sweating right now. <laughs> it feels good in here today. I'm, I'm <laughs> kind of enjoying it. I, I, I adjusted the thermostat, Justin, oh, just for you. Appreciate you, Ursula. Appreciate you. Just between uh, us. Don't worry, David. We'll get you some cool air in here. You'll be fine. And then You're we're going to open great. the doors tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you can open the doors and the windows. It's going to feel like fall. You're going to have to wait till the afternoon, though, because it's not going to, that front's not going to get here until the uh, early afternoon. Take a look at the time lapse. We showed you this earlier, but I want to show you the fog we had this morning, but it lifted quickly, and now we're left, left with partly cloudy skies, 74 degrees. South Southeast Julie winds at 7 miles per hour, and yes, it is humid, but it'll only be humid for a day because that front sweeps all the humidity out by tomorrow. Uh, there's a look at the satellite picture. We did have some pretty decent clearing, but the clouds have filled back in now, and I think we'll deal with partly cloudy skies the rest of the day. 75 at Randolph, 76 in New Braunfels, 75 Hondo, 70 up there at Bernie Stage, 77 in Kennedy, 80 in Catula. And so partly cloudy skies, San Antonio to the south and east. As you go west, clouds are thicker at 73 in Del Rio and cloudy there, and then across the hill country as well. Fredericksburg looking at cloudy skies and 70 degrees. So where those clouds are thicker, temperatures will be kept down some today. And as you look to the north, we're really socked in here across parts of West Texas and Central Texas, San Angelo, Midland, uh, down towards Fort Stockton. And it's because of a frontal battery. So behind that front, clouds are thick, and this is what we can expect as we get into tomorrow and more so on Thursday. Even up in the Texas Panhandle, it is cloudy, and those clouds are not going to break anytime soon. Look at the numbers, 42 in Amarillo, 44 in Lubbock, 47 in Midland. Gives you an idea of just how strong this front is. The cold air is not very thick. It's very, very shallow, but it's sort of oozing south, and it will make it here to San Antonio. We're still, again, in the 70s here. 63 Waco, 56 in Dallas. Forecast for today, we make it up to about 79 for a high. And then sunset will be around 646. We're down to 77 at 8 o'clock. As we get into tomorrow, temperatures will be a little bit tricky because the timing of this front's a little bit in question, although I think it'll be sometime after lunch. This is noontime tomorrow. We've got temperatures near 70 here in Del Rio and San Antonio, still in the 40s to our north. But by the afternoon, as that front sweeps through, we see those temperatures drop off into the 60s and I think pretty quickly into the 50s by tomorrow evening with a stout northerly wind. As far as rain goes, 
We'll start off maybe with a little bit of drizzle tomorrow morning, so the morning commute could be a little bit wet. And then by noontime, we've got showers and some storms trying to develop right along the front. And then even behind the front with some upper level energy moving through, we should have a decent shot at some rain, some good downpours. And this lasts through about sunrise Thursday. Then the rain clears out, but the clouds stick around, and that's what keeps us so cool on Thursday. How much rain can we expect? I'd say anywhere from a half an inch to an inch. Uh, we're not expecting a, a lot of flooding or anything like that, but there could be some spots that pick up maybe a little bit more than an inch, and there could be some localized flooding. There is a, a marginal risk, and this is a low-end risk, of some flooding rainfall tomorrow, and that's basically San Antonio off to the east. We'll keep an eye on that. Shouldn't again be a big issue. We're not looking for a lot of severe weather either. This is mostly going to be rain with some rumbles of thunder mixed in. Here's the extended forecast. We go 70 tomorrow, but we achieve that at about lunchtime and then temperatures tumble from there. 70% chance of rain. 49 Thursday morning, 57 for a high on Thursday. That's it with breezy conditions. We drop down to 46 Friday morning. Some places in the hill country could be looking at mid to upper 30s Friday morning. We're not calling for a freeze, but it is going to be chilly up there. And then the weekend looks great, guys. Thank you, Justin. Hey, the Cowboys are having everything go right these days. We'll talk about that coming up. And then they will catch a break Sunday when they host the Denver Broncos as well. We'll explain that. San Antonio Spurs wrapping up a three-game road trip last night in Indiana, looking for a two-game winning streak. First quarter, Keldon Johnson put that on a poster and hang that on your wall. Ooh, Spurs trail, though. Play later, DeJounte Murray picks up where he left off Saturday night. Nice mid-range jumper. Game tied at 13, but the Pacers pick up the pace, go on a 12-0 run, kept off by the Miles Turner basket and the foul. Spurs down 43-33 after one second quarter. Derek White trying to keep things close. Hits the three. Indiana just too hot in the first half, though, knocking down 12 three-pointers, including that step back from Chris LeVert to beat the halftime buzzer. Spurs down 78-56 at the break. Third quarter, no better. DeMonte Sabonis with the slam. He finished with a game-high 24. Eight Spurs finished in double figures, but it wasn't enough. San Antonio Falls 131-118 in a game that wasn't even really that close. Coach Pop, not happy. The game was obviously more important to the Pacers than it was to us. We didn't have enough guys uh, mentally ready to compete or to execute uh, for whatever reason. It happens in the NBA now and then, but shouldn't be happening this early in the year. Very disappointed in our play tonight uh, in both execution and competitiveness. Hopefully it'll be better on Wednesday night. Tomorrow night, the Spurs host the Mavericks. It's a one-game homestand. So it's Dallas here at home, and then they go back out on the road. So that one tips off 730 AT&T Center. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys, one of the top teams in the NFC at 6-1. They have won six straight. The biggest game of the year was Sunday when they beat the Minnesota Vikings without Dak in Minnesota. Prescott, a late scratch before the kickoff Sunday night because of that sore right calf. So Cooper Rush got the call for his first NFL start. What a game for him. 325 yards, two second half TDs, including that great catch from Amari Cooper. But you have to also give credit to the Dallas D after an early TD. They kept the Vikings out of the end zone for the rest of the game. Randy Gregory was a monster, picking up his fifth sack in his last four games. It felt great, man. I, it's, a, it's the kind of win you need. Uh, you know, it's been two straight games where we had to kind of tough it out. Um, kind of kind of gives you that playoff, yeah. you know, atmosphere. Um, but that's, that's the kind of wins you need, you know, kind of tough it out throughout the end and uh, play through some adversity. Uh, seems like we've been doing that a lot lately and uh, came out with a dub. All right, next up for the Cowboys, the Broncos on Sunday at noon in AT&T Stadium and the Cowboys face Denver. Denver won't have to worry, or Dallas won't have to worry about linebacker and sack machine Von Miller. Denver won't have to worry about him either because he was traded to the Los Angeles Rams for a second round and third round pick in 2022 after 10 seasons in Denver. Reporters caught up with the former Aggie yesterday when he was leaving the Bronco facility. He was asked if he was surprised about the trade. Uh, yeah, you know, I, you know, surprising. You know, I love, you know, the Denver Broncos. Um, you know, it's just, you know, all the everything is just still, you know, new. And, um, you know, it's hard to, you know, really put the emotions into words. You know, this is all I know. This is, you know, this is all I, you know, ever. 
you know, every new plan of pro, pro sports here with here with the Denver Broncos. I've, you know, I've been here through the ups and the downs. And, you know, it's always tough whenever you whenever you leave. Yeah, you can tell he's pretty emotional about about leaving about that trade after 10 years uh, with one city. And that's the only city he knows. That's a tough move for him. Yeah, you can see the emotion. But he's going from a bad team to a very good team. So that'll probably change pretty, pretty soon. Turn that frown upside yep. down. Yeah. All right, coming up, some local students are stepping outside of the classroom to learn some valuable lessons. In the next half hour, Max Massey explains how they're enjoying the fruits and vegetables of their labor. And it's another day of travel chaos. American Airlines canceled hundreds more flights, totaling more than 2,000 over the past few days. What you can do to avoid a flight cancellation. Still ahead. It is election day and not just here in Texas, it's all across the country. Voters picking new city and state leaders. That includes Virginia, where voters are weighing in on a governor's race that could rattle President Joe Biden and Democrats in Washington. Democrat candidate Terry McAuliffe and Republican Glenn Youngkin are statistically tied. Youngkin reinforcing talking points popular with Republicans nationwide. McAuliffe seizing on national concern over Republicans challenge to reproductive rights. We will not have political agendas in the classroom and I will ban critical race theory. I will and was a brick wall to protect your reproductive rights. And in many parts of the country, one of the main issues this election day is police reform. In Minneapolis, a city still shaken by George Floyd's murder, will vote on whether to replace its police department with a new Department of Public Safety. Now to Glasgow. Scotland, where President Biden is spending another day at a climate summit. He spoke earlier today addressing his long term strategy for cutting greenhouse gas emissions. ABC's Rita Roy has the latest. On day three of this crucial climate conference, we're committing to collectively reduce our methane by 30 percent by 2030. President Biden laying out his vision for a cleaner planet, unveiling a sweeping plan to cut methane emissions, a powerful greenhouse gas experts say is largely responsible for global warming. New strict rules will allow the EPA to crack down on the oil and gas industry, a producer of methane gas. This isn't just something we have to do to protect the environment in our future. It's an enormous opportunity, enormous opportunity for all of us, all of our nations to create jobs, and make meeting climate goals a core part of our global economic recovery as well. The White House also promising to protect tropical rainforests and forests at home. This plan is the first of its kind. And taking a whole government approach and working in our case with Congress to deploy up to $9 billion in U.S. funding through 2030 to conserve and restore our forests. As Biden faces struggles at home with his Build Back Better plan, he is taking it to the world stage. Build Back Better world is going to show that we can grow our economies, fight climate change, and leave a better, cleaner, more livable planet for all of our children. For the first time in five years, the U.S. back at the table. And more than 100 countries signed on to that historic methane pledge. It is the first time that world leaders are collectively agreeing to cut down on that harmful gas. Rena Roy, ABC News, Glasgow, Scotland. Back here at home, thousands of travelers still trying to get to their destinations after American Airlines and Southwest canceled thousands of flights. Over the weekend, one in 10 flights didn't take off. Airlines are doing what they can to get travelers going, though, not just putting them on other flights, but also sending them to other airports. I was surprised when they switched my airports. The lady at the desk, when I was originally trying to get my ticket fixed, told me, yeah, we just don't have any pilots. American and Southwest blame systems meltdowns on staffing and windstorms. However, some travel industry analysts say this is a result of poor planning by airlines. So what can you do to avoid a flight cancellation? Try to book early flights. The first flight of the day is the least likely to be impacted by weather or staffing issues. American and Southwest Airlines both say they expect improvements sometime today. Looking outside with live cam, the, the clouds parted and then they came right back. It is overcast. We are expecting changes in the weather.
Yeah, big changes coming up tomorrow. We've been waiting on you know a stronger front to move through. It is finally uh, scheduled to arrive tomorrow. Take a look at the difference. So today we're going to see high temperatures at around four o'clock of 79 degrees. Tomorrow by 4 p.m. we'll be dealing with temperatures in the 60s, gusty north winds, showers and storms, and it may almost be jacket weather. So just a heads up, tomorrow will be a very different day, at least by the late afternoon. Right now, though, still pretty comfortable. 74 degrees at the airport, 78 Hondo, 71 Bandera, 72 up there in Kerrville. Partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies for many of us, and temperatures should get into the upper 70s, close to 80 this afternoon. That next cold front, we wanted to go with strong, but it's not quite there. We'll call it noticeable, and temperatures will go from the 80s and 70s today down into the 50s eventually for highs on Thursday, lows in the 40s, and that drier air will funnel in by the end of the week. So we're getting some good fall fronts at this point, and there's a look at the front. Still making its way through San Angelo. It's through Midland, Abilene, and you can see the difference, 40s and 50s, but it's a slow mover. Again, it's not here until early tomorrow afternoon. 78 degrees today. Southeast Julie winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll talk more about that front. We'll look ahead to to the weekend here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. The 2020 U.S. Census missing an estimated 1.6 million people. But given the hurdles posed by the pandemic and natural disasters, that undercount was really smaller than expected. That's according to an analysis by a think tank called the Urban Institute. It estimates that there were only a 0.5% undercount. If that modeled estimate holds true, it would be greater than the 0.01% undercount estimated in the 2010 census, but right in the same range as the undercount we had in the 2000 census. The official undercount of the census won't be known until next year when the Census Bureau releases its report card on how well it did. Agriculture, healthy, healthy eating, and sustainability. Students at IDEA Eastside here in San Antonio are learning life lessons in the classroom and on the campus farm. Max Massey shows us it's about growth and nutrition, but it's also a chance to assist with social emotional development. I like how healthy and green the farm looks. Genesis is a seventh grader here at IDEA Eastside, one of the many students passionate about growing their own food. We're able to actually Instead of them sitting in a classroom learning about how plants work on paper, how food works, they're actually able to see it happen in real time. Once the produce is grown here on the land or in the leafy green machine, it goes to the cafeteria. But yeah, that's the red meat radish. Getting them interested into, uh, into why farming is important and, and why nutrition is really important. And uh, having this tool here that we have at this campus is really invaluable in order to, to do that. We're here in the leafy green machine. We have everything from cabbage to lettuce, but we also have strawberries and it's so cool because these students get to see the product start to finish and let's see mmm delicious idea east side is located around one where uh, a lot of the food around us is heavy, heavily processed or not extremely nutritious and if you're growing up in that environment and you're not able to see what else is out there that's just what you assume is the norm so this program is is sort of that first opening of the gates and, and exposing these students to, to, to better, high quality, more nutritious food. These students are growing everything from flowers to tomatoes, even turnips. It's just utter excitement. Like, that's pretty much what it is. They are amazed by how it works. As for Genesis, she is excited and she's learning a lot. Really take care of your resources and take care of the planet. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. A group of men taking a different approach when it comes to fitness, how they're incorporating faith and fellowship into their program and changing a life chain, rather creating a life changing support system. When it comes to fitness, sometimes it can be hard to stay motivated, and that's why it is always very important to have a good support system. In today's New You, producer Alyssa Medina introduces us to a group of men who have built a community out of sweat, prayers, and a lot of laughs. Fitness, faith, and fellowship. 
That's what makes up F3, an all-men workout group with a unique approach. No trainers, no programming, just camaraderie. Backs like size, yeah, Spider-Man! Spider-Man! Spider Starting position, move! In cans! And exercise! One, two, three, one. Well, every day there's a different leader, a different person in the group leads the workouts. And so depending on, on that person, it could be less or more intense. It could be a little bit more running, a little bit less running. Carlos Garcia, also known as Stakeout or Abuelito, has been with F3 since it first came to San Antonio about six years ago. Like everyone, he earned his nickname at his first class. 40 And Josh said, if you're cute, three, eight molts. This name now makes you part of, of this group. And, and whatever you are outside, we're going to help you get better uh, together. Yeah, the first day, I mean, the workout is no joke. Like many of the men of F3, Andrew Torian, or Chewy, was working out on his own, but knew he needed some more motivation. Not native to this area. I've definitely felt that just kind of going to work and wondering, you know, where, where do I fit in? Where is my peer group? I can't think of a place that's been, you know, off, right off the bat that's so welcoming and supportive. You know, we go through our lives, we, we go to school, we you know, get a job and start working, get a family. And this group allows people to sort of step out of there, build that camaraderie that, that a lot of us maybe haven't had since we were little kids. Each workout ends with a circle of trust a place for the men to share everything from upcoming events and nutrition tips to prayers and life advice. Uh, some guys are dealing with some tough things. Um, you know, this morning uh, we heard about some people that have passed away, and so some guys are really hurting. Cyril Gutierrez, or Spur, is one of the organizers for the local chapter. He says what may seem to many as free workouts in the park has truly become a life-changing support system. I mean, we got guys that are as young as like 16 and as old as like 75, 76 years old. And, and just a diverse set of men, and they're all here with the same purpose and the same cause, and they're all pouring into you as you're working out. And they'll just say little nuggets of things that just you just take into your life, and you, you embed it with within your own routines and all of a sudden you look back and you've become such a better person and such a better man uh, for yourself, for your family, uh, for your employer, you know, for your community. And I have like this group to thank. Um, it has sharpened me so much and all these guys behind me will say the exact same thing. For New Year that was very cool. Alyssa Medina did that story. F3 Alamo classes are always free and they're held daily outside at local parks, greenways and fields. And you can find a link to their website and calendar on kset.com. Ooh, look like some tough workouts. Though. Yeah, as you said, some planks. Planking on the parking lot. Planking on the parking, on the parking, parking lot. lot. <laughs> That's tough. And, uh, you know, I bet they're hoping for some cooler weather. It always helps when you're doing those workouts outside. We're going to get there. Uh, we just have to get through today. 74 so far today. 62 the low this morning. Records are 88 and 31. So, yes, we're starting to get to that time of year where we technically could see some freezing temperatures, although not in the forecast. We'll take a look at that cold front. Time it out for you. Coming up. We okay. learn so much on this show. Yeah, we do. Yeah. What did you learn today? Justin does not like planks. <laughs> That's a true story. And that's because he's like seven feet tall. So that's a There's very a long distance long plank. to bridge. Yeah. See, uh, I'm making excuses right now, but <laughs> sure, that makes, that makes <laughs> sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's go with it. Uh, yesterday, guys, we came out of stage one restrictions. At least Sauce customers did. And we've been doing pretty well with the rainfall. You can see we're above average, nearly four inches above average, 32.44 for the year here in San Antonio. Now, if you're watching us from out west, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, I know you still need some rain. Hopefully we'll get you a little bit next couple days as this front moves in. And yes, I think we'll add to our total here in San Antonio as well. Skies were clearing earlier. Now we're starting to see these clouds fill back in. So it's mostly cloudy now at the airport. 74, 80 at Stinson, 76 Kelly, 77 at Randolph. And temperatures, 77 New Braunfels, 70 Burning Stage, 72 Comfort. And these temperatures today are going to be dictated by the cloud cover. So where the clouds are a little thicker, obviously, we're going to see some cooler numbers. Hill Country, 68 Rock Springs, 72 there in Kerrville. We are seeing some sun down to the south and east. So places like Pleasanton now up to 80. Forecast here in San Antonio, we should get up into the upper 70s before those temperatures 
move back down into the 60s tonight. And by the overnight hour, we, we could start to see a little bit of drizzle mixing in as well. So here's the uh, satellite picture, and you can see kind of how the cloud cover is setting up here. Partly to mostly cloudy skies here in this region. You go up into the hill country, it's pretty much cloudy. Rock Springs, Del Rio, cloudy skies for sure. Same story around Eagle Pass. Well, mostly cloudy there. And we're going to see a lot more cloud cover coming up because we have a frontal boundary, which right now is about right there behind the front. Those areas are really socked in with clouds, and this is kind of what we have to look forward to. By Thursday, we're going to be socked in ourselves. It'll be cloudy and cool. So you zoom out some here, you see the temperatures in the Texas Panhandle, 44 in Lubbock, 42 in Amarillo. That's behind the front. 55 Dallas, 49 Abilene. We're still in the 70s and 80s out ahead of this thing. And this is pretty much going to stall today. It's not moving very quickly. It's tomorrow where it will get that push. And we think it'll be here by early afternoon. So after lunch, maybe 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we'll start to see the effects from this front. And it will make a big difference on temperatures. We'll make it up to about 70 by lunchtime. I think it's probably cloudy most of the day tomorrow. And then once the front moves through, we get those stout northerly winds. It'll feel cooler. Temperatures will probably drop off about 10 degrees or so. And uh, by the evening, we'll be in the 50s. So it'll be a big change. As far as rain goes, again, by tonight, this is 10 o'clock. Clouds start to fill back in. And then we'll start to see a few showers, maybe some drizzle tomorrow morning for your morning commute. And then by midday, showers and storms start to develop along the front. And then I think we have a pretty good shot Wednesday night into early, early Thursday morning of seeing showers and storms. Uh, we're not looking for severe weather, but there could be some pockets of heavier rain setting up. And that will total to about half an inch to an inch on average. If you're out west, numbers probably will be a little bit less. And I can't guarantee everyone's going to get a half inch in this area shaded in blue. But... Again, it's a generalized idea here, and there could be some localized spots that get more than an inch, which could lead to a little bit of flooding, but we're not expecting again widespread flooding, nor are we expecting severe weather, uh, just some lightning and thunder and some heavier rain. 79, degree, 79 degrees today, 70 on Wednesday, 70% 70 chance of rain, and then we drop down into the 40s by Thursday morning. 57 Thursday, cloudy, breezy, cooler, Clouds do clear out on Friday, 65, and then the weekend looks fantastic. 71 Saturday, 74 Sunday, so it times out well there. We fall back. Don't forget about that on Sunday. And then weather looks pretty good going into next week. We'll be right back. Some big names, stars in a movie about super-powered, long-time guardians of humanity. However, these heroes might be a little less familiar to you if you're a Marvel movie fan. CNN's David Daniel has a look at Eternals ahead of its highly anticipated release this coming weekend. We have helped them progress. Eternals have nurtured humanity for 7,000 years. We have never interfered. Until now. Oscar-winning director Chloe Zhao went from indie films to the MCU. I had to pitch for it. And they have to, we both have to look at each other and go, there's something about what you're offering we really want. And that's when I have the project. Ajak, played by Salma Hayek, leads the team. I had given up on uh, the hope of Marvel noticing that I existed. And uh, it was just amazing. The diverse cast includes Lauren Ridloff as the MCU's first deaf superhero. I love that my deafness is not seen as, you know, a driving point to a story. It's just, you know, it's just an asset. And Kumail Nanjiani as its first South Asian superhero. I wanted him to be the opposite of most of the opportunities that I'd gotten and the, most of the opportunities that, that brown men have gotten in Hollywood, you know? So usually either we play terrorists, I wanted him to be full of joy, the opposite of that, or we're nerds and I wanted him to be cool or we're weak and I wanted him to be strong. So I just sort of was like, what is, what is something that I haven't gotten to do? that we don't usually get to do, let's be the opposite of all that. Between the heroics, we see the friendships, which the cast formed off screen as well, most of them. I don't think I was really expecting to come out of this with so many incredible friendships. I mean, 
I really got to know everyone so well. Yeah, I made no friends on this movie. <laughs> Excuse me. Apart from you. We became friends. Yeah. We became friends. Okay. We've loved these people since the day we arrived. When you love something, you protect it. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Looks good. The good news is Mike and Fiona are friends, so, that, so it works a little better down there. They so. are absolutely <laughs> friends. <laughs> yes. Of course. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, today on the show, we are showing you ways to kind of keep those marigolds going on your ofrendas. Yes, indeed. And our dear friend, Megan Sevilla from Bloom and Stem is here. And you said if you got to have a flower to kind of be very versatile, this is This, this is, easy. is it. Marigolds are so fun. They smell really earthy. And as you can see, we have little potted ones. We have fresh cut ones. And then we're going to make be making garlands later. And you can also eat them. Oh, really? They're edible, so you can just pull them off and make them a little decor. I love it. Yeah. Okay, and she is also going to be showing us how you can turn your home shower into a really cool spa experience. Very, very <laughs> simple. That's coming up. Okay, now that we have passed Halloween, is it time to start decorating for Christmas yet? I mean, there is a thing called Thanksgiving in the middle. So. I know, but are you one of those people who just skip over Thanksgiving and just start decorating for Christmas? Let us know at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter. I see some nodding over here. I don't decorate yet, but I mean, <laughs> but then there's the Hallmark. Okay, okay, anyway, whole, whole different thing. So, <laughs> hey, looking for something really cool out there. Five fun finds. We are going to take a little tour around town and talk about all of the neat things going on. And we have some performances from El Taircito de Son from Veracruz, Mexico. Yeah, an interesting fact about uh, the music from Veracruz. We'll tell you all about that and a whole lot more coming up on I Say Live, so stick around.